Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A couple days ago, I did a video on how to best use Lightroom's generative AI remove tool, because quite often when you use the generative AI remove tool in Lightroom, you'll get unexpected, even undesirable results. And in that video, I demonstrated how you could use it to more often get results that you expect. Well, in this video, I want to talk about how to use Photoshop's generative AI to remove something in an image and how to best use it so that you get results that you expect. Now, this is one of the images I used in that Lightroom video, and we're going to be using it in this Photoshop video. In that Lightroom video, I used this image to remove the man from the photo, and we're going to be doing it again here. Now, to use generative AI in Photoshop, you first have to make a selection. And there's several different ways to make a selection. One of the ways is just to use object selection because it's the easiest and fastest way. So to do that, we're going to get the object selection tool. The keyboard shortcut is the W key. And you'll notice that the W keyboard shortcut is shared by three different selection tools. We want to make sure we're using that object selection tool. And by the way, on my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have a free PDF that you could download that has all of the keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop. So you could download that for free and print it at home. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now with the object selection tool, I could hover over an object, for example, the man. And you can see I get the red overlay and then just click. And it will take a second, but then you'll see that there'll be marching ants going around the man. I have the man selected. Now, Unfortunately, when you do select something using the object selection tool, it doesn't really always select everything about the man. You could see here that it's missing part of his hand here, and it probably didn't get right outside of his, let's say, shoulders and didn't get outside of his hair. So some of his shoulders, some of his pants, some of his hair might not be selected. So I'm going to do a couple things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the selection. To do that, we're going to go up to select modify, expand, and we'll expand it by maybe 30 pixels and we'll click OK. Now you'll see the marching ants are definitely outside of his shoulder and mostly outside of his hair. We still have this issue with his hand. So I'll fix that with the quick selection tool and we want to make sure that we're adding. So I'll get the plus brush and we're going to add to the selection by getting his hand in there. We could come out a little bit. That's good. We'll even come out to the edge of the woman's like shirt and skirt. So that looks okay. Now we have the selection. Now, if we go down and look at the contextual taskbar, you'll notice that after we have our selection, it says generative fill right here. And by the way, if you don't see the contextual taskbar, go up to window and make sure that it has a check mark next to it. And if you're tired of the contextual taskbar jumping all over the place and you want it to stay in one place, you click these three little dots and you could then in the bar position. So now it will not move. So I'll click on generative fill. And now it's asking me, what do I want to put in that area that I selected? Well, I don't want to put anything there. I want to just remove the man. So I'm not going to type anything here. I'm just going to click generate. And you'll see that it will take a second because it's actually sending the image up to Adobe servers and all the heavy lifting is done there. And when it comes back, it will hopefully have the man removed from the image. But as you see, it doesn't have the man removed from the image. It replaced the man with three variations of humans, <laughs> you could say, and none of them are acceptable. So we got unexpected results. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that when generative remove was in beta, I did a video on it and I was doing selections pretty much like this using the object selection tool and I was getting poor results. And I was probably one of the few people that were doing videos kind of saying this kind of stinks. I hope they improve it. Uh, several people pointed out to me that they were watching other videos from other people who were doing it who were better than me. And those people were using the lasso tool to make their selection because apparently if you use the object selection tool and you get too nice of a selection, it doesn't work as well. So it's kind of opposite of what you think. You need a kind of a looser selection. So let's try that. Let's get rid of this layer. I'll toss it off to the garbage. And we're right back kind of where we started. So we have the, the lady and the man. 
So instead, we're going to use the lasso tool. So I'll get the lasso tool, and I'm just going to get a rough selection around the man, like this. So we're going to come in and go roughly, roughly around the man. Now, if you're like me and you're kind of aggravated trying to paint with the lasso tool, like I am, kind of aggravated here, um, there is actually another way you could do this that will give you a selection. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you don't like using the lasso tool, I'm going to show you a different way you could do this. So we're going to get this loose selection with the lasso tool of the man. So we have this selection. I'm going to click on generative fill. Then I'm going to just going to click on generate. Now, again, it's got to go up to Adobe servers and we'll see what happens here. I anticipate maybe we'll get better results, but generative fill is kind of like a crapshoot. You don't know how the dice are going to lay, you know? And in this case, we have three uh, kind of mutant men again. So it did not work. Well, here's the deal. If you watch my Lightroom video, you know that I mentioned in that video when you use generative AI remove, that one of the things that the generative AI looks at is the rough shape of your selection. If your selection looks like it's a, the outline of a human, it's going to think that you want a human in there. And in doing so, it's going to try to put another human in there. So the trick is when you make your selection, if you want that thing you're selecting, in this case, the man, to be totally removed, make sure that your selection doesn't look like the outline of the man. So what we'll do is we'll throw this layer out again. We'll start over. And in this case, I want to remove the man, but I'm going to get the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to come outside here, and we're going to get this rectangular selection of the man. Now, I do have part of her arm selected as well as you can see. So I want to remove that from the selection. So I am going to again get the quick selection tool. This time I'm going to use a minus brush because I will remove it from her arm. And this doesn't have to be very precise. You could just roughly remove it from her arm like this. We need to remove it down here a little bit and maybe down here just a touch. Okay, so I have her pretty much removed from the selection and I just have this mostly rectangular selection around the man. We're going to click on generative fill. And again, I'll just click on generate. And again, it's going to send it up to Adobe servers. And now, hopefully, it actually removes the man and doesn't put another human in there or humanoid in there. And instead, voila, it replaced the man with the background, at least with two of them. There's the second one. And here's the third one, which has a very odd looking man in there. Hey, we got some better results. At least we could work with this now. We could fix up this little bit here with maybe a clone stamp tool. We could change the background a little bit with a clone stamp tool and so on. So really the key is if you want to remove something from the image and you don't want it replaced with another thing like it, make sure that when you do your selection, that your selection isn't in the shape of the thing you're removing. Make it, make sure that it's, it's different in this case. I used a rectangular marquee tool to get rid of the man. Now, a couple different things I want to show you. Um, there is another way we could do this. And sometimes the uh, one way will work better. There is a specific tool in here now, and it's this remove tool. This remove tool, and keyboard shortcut J, but you can see there's like six different tools that use the keyboard shortcut. Um, this remove tool uses AI. So you could try using this remove tool. So in this case, I'm going to make sure that remove after each stroke is not checked. I don't want to check that because I want to brush a little stop, brush some more stop. If you have that checked, you just brush. And as soon as you stop brushing, it's going to try to remove what you, and I don't want it to do that. So what we'll do is then we'll get a slightly bigger brush by hitting the right bracket key, left bracket key makes it smaller. And then we're going to paint on the man. Now you see that the overlay that I'm painting, it looks kind of very light. If you'd like to change that, click this little gear icon. You could change the color. I'll leave it magenta, but I'm going to go to the slider and I'm going to just boost it up so that the opacity is darker. And you can see that. You can better see it now. And I'm going to again come in like this. And we'll use this tool now. All right. So we got to paint the entire man. I can't just go around the perimeter of him. All right. All right, now, now we got to do the middle. 
in there. So it did. We got the man painted with this tool. Now, because I have it so that I have to click, I don't have remove after each stroke checked, I have to click this little check mark. Sometimes this tool will work. It really depends on the background. If the background is really complicated and it has to, like, it creates something for the background, like a gate or like a house or a building, this tool is probably going to fail. But if it's a background such as this that isn't really anything specific, it probably probably use pixels from around the edges or whatever and come up with uh, something that is acceptable. I don't really like what it did here, but you get the idea. But the thing is, it doesn't give you variations. You get one shot at it, and if you don't like it, you'd have to undo it and try it again. But this is another option. If generative AI is failing you, try this new remove tool and see if it works. So that really is the lesson for today. But I did want to show you one thing. If you don't like using the lasso tool, but you still need to draw a selection around something, there's something in Photoshop you could use that isn't used that often. It's not utilized that often. Let me go back to the beginning here so we have our man back. So instead of using the lasso tool, there's something in Light or in Photoshop called the Quick Mask tool. It's this tool right here. If you don't see it here, go up to Edit and then down to Toolbar and then make sure that it's turned on. It's right here. So make sure you have the Quick Mask tool turned on. Now, if you've never used it before, the settings are going to be wrong. So you have to adjust a setting first. To do that, click on the Quick Mask tool to turn it on, then double click on it to come up with the Quick Mask options. By default, the color is going to indicate the masked areas. Instead, you're going to want the color to indicate the selected areas. All right, then click OK. Now, once you have the tool active, all right, so the tool is active right now. You can see it says Quick Mask right here. What you need to do is get a brush. Hit the B key for the brush. Make sure you're actually using a brush because the B key is uh, shared again by a number of different types of brushes. Make sure you're using the regular brush tool and make sure you're painting in black. If you don't see black here, hit D on your keyboard for the default colors and make sure black is the forward swatch. If it isn't, hit the X key to swap them. Now we have a brush, all right? And we're in quick mask mode. You can see it says quick mask mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get a large brush. Now, it says black, I'm painting in black. But notice, because quick mask is on, I'm not actually painting in black, I'm painting in red. So that way you kind of know you're using quick mask tool. So then what we're going to do is we're going to very quickly go around the man as so around her elbow. I should probably get a smaller brush to do that properly, but that's all right because I'm just showing you how to use quick mask. I'm not going to get a good, I'm going to obviously not going to get a good replacement for the man here. Now, let go with your left mouse button. You have this big kind of red blob where you paint it. Turn off quick mask mode by clicking on the click quick mask icon, or you could just hit the Q key. Now you notice you have a selection. It's as though I use the lasso tool. So that's another way you could do this. If you don't like using the lasso tool, sometimes the quick mask tool is a little easier. Now we could go to generative fill, click generate. Now I guarantee it's not going to be good. Just because I use quick mask doesn't make it any better. It's going to probably replace this with three uh, mutant men that look like they, you know, were in a nuclear accident. And there we go. Just wanted to show you that as an aside, that the Quick Mask tool is available for those of you that do not like using the Lasso tool. That's it. I hope what I showed you in this video will help you better utilize uh, Photoshop's generative AI when you want to remove something from an image. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.